Hello everyone, my name is Ziamaro and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be doing a fairly comprehensive guide to getting better performance in Apex Legends on PC. This guide is for people like me who are trying to squeeze a little extra juice out of a dated but otherwise decent setup, or if you have a low-end PC and you're just trying to get the game into a playable state, this video is for you too. I have seen some other guides out there that will help you get better performance, but the issue is some of them miss out some great options you have to improve performance, some don't tell you what each setting actually does, and others just give you text files to copy and paste. That's all well and good if you have a very standard setup, but if you have, say, a 720p monitor or something like that, you're going to end up with some issues if you just copy and paste someone else's settings. So I'm going to go through everything step by step, which will allow you to decide for yourself what you do and don't want to tweak, and bonus, it will be catered to your system, not some random YouTuber or Reddit posters. So on with the guide. I'm going to be covering the following. Launch options, in-game settings and the video config file. And then I'll get into the weirder, more optional stuff like the auto EXE file, custom resolutions and Nvidia Inspector. Let's start with launch options. Open up Origin, go to your game library, click on Apex Legends and click the little settings cog. From there, select game properties and go to the advanced launch options tab. In the box, first put in minus no vid. This doesn't actually improve your performance, but it does get rid of the EA and respawn splash screen when you launch the game. It, it's just a nice thing to add. The other thing you can put in is plus FPS underscore max space unlimited. This removes the FPS cap, which is set to 144 by default, I believe. If you're on a laptop or if power consumption is a concern to you, I would set this to something more sensible for you, whether that's 60, 120 or whatever. You might be all right, but if your laptop doesn't have sufficient cooling, you do run the risk of overheating if you totally remove the FPS cap. Plus, if the laptop starts thermal throttling, it kind of defeats the object of tweaking this stuff in the first place, right? Personally, I have it on unlimited, but I just wanted to warn you. Next, the in-game settings. Some of this is down to personal preference and most of it is fairly self-explanatory. If your only concern is performance, you should do the following. Leave the game on full screen. Aspect ratio should be left at your monitor's native. Resolution is an interesting one. If you have a good computer, just leave it at your monitor's native resolution. However, this game is mostly bottlenecked by your GPU. So if you just want some quick and easy gains to your FPS, just lower your resolution. Seriously, it makes a big difference. Field of view is partly preference, but lower numbers do improve performance. Issue is lower FOV does mean you'll see less while playing. I go with 104 here, but just pick whatever suits you. V-Sync, switch that off. Adaptive resolution is actually really cool and we'll come back to that later because you can actually do some interesting stuff with it in the config files. Anti-aliasing, turn that off. Disable texture streaming budget or set it to whatever memory your graphics card has. In my case, I have a GTX 970. It was originally advertised as 4 GB, but famously turned out to be only 3.5. So I set it to three. And from here, just turn everything to low or disabled, whatever is the lowest option. Personally, I really like borderless window, anti-aliasing and texture filtering. So I enable all of those. There is a performance hit for each of them, particularly anti-aliasing, but for me, it's worth it. Next, we'll take a look at the super secret settings. This is where the biggest performance increase will come for most people. The video config file. For this, press Windows plus R and copy and paste the directory I've listed in the video description. That will take you to the folder with the video config file. Before you change anything here, make sure you have all of your in-game settings how you like them. But once you've done that, open up videoconfig.txt in WordPad or your favorite text editor. I'm using Notepad++. So let's go through your options here. Some people change the particle fallback settings to zero, but actually high effect detail settings in game lower these parameters. So honestly, I would just leave them alone unless you really know what you're doing. Ragdoll self collision effects, you guessed it, ragdolls. We don't need those, so change that to zero. Depth feather enable is the depth of field effect when you aim down sights, change that to zero. LOD switch scale is the model detail setting in game. One would be high, 0.8 is medium, and 0.6 is low. This basically changes the distance at which the higher quality models are loaded. You can safely turn this down to 0.35 without adversely affecting gameplay, but I wouldn't push it any lower than that or you'll start to have some issues. Next, we have the big one. 
Towards the bottom, you'll see a setting called CSM Enabled. This controls all the shadows in the game. Set this to zero and you'll have no shadows. There are some obvious disadvantages to this. For example, if an enemy is flying above you, you won't see their shadow. However, you gain a huge FPS bump by turning shadows off. So just do it if you want better performance. And finally, let's take a look at DVS Enabled. You know that adaptive resolution I skimmed over earlier? That's DVS. If you just want more frames, you can set this to 1 and then set the GPU min and max frame times below it to 1 and 1 on both. This forces the game to constantly run at 50% resolution. If you want to keep your UI the correct size but get some of the benefits of a lower resolution, you can try this out. And the reason I say some of the benefits is because adaptive resolution forces anti-aliasing on, which as I mentioned does come with a performance hit. So Technically, you'll get better performance by just lowering your resolution and leaving adaptive resolution off. But let me tell you how I use this setting. At 1080p, with the tweaks I've already mentioned, I can get my frame rate to stay around 120. However, as soon as a thermite grenade gets thrown, my FPS absolutely tanks. I could set the adaptive resolution frame rate to 100, but what if I want it to stay at 120? The in-game settings don't allow that. Well, by tweaking the GPU frame time min and max, you can set it to numbers that aren't available in game. The max number controls the target frame rate and the minimum, honestly, I'm not 100% sure. So let me know in the comments if you do understand this. But what I have noticed is the minimum is always set to around 3.15% lower than the maximum in the default settings. Unfortunately, it takes a bit of tweaking to find the exact numbers if, say, you want to set the target to 120, but I've worked out a few of the more common ones for you. If you want the target to be 120 FPS, set the GPU frame time min to 7949 and the max to 8200. For 144 FPS, set the min to 6592 and the max to 6800. And for 200 FPS, the minimum should be 4750 and the max should be 4900. And finally, towards the bottom, you'll see DVS Super Sample Enable. I would set this to zero. This also ties into the adaptive resolution, but it instead scales things up when you have processing to spare. If you're just aiming for a higher frame rate, leave this off. Once you're done with the video config file, save it. And this part is important. You need to right click the file, go to properties and set the file to read only. If you don't do this, all these changes will get overwritten when you launch the game. All these settings will also have no effect if you change any video settings later. So once you save the config file and set it to read only, do not change any of your video settings in game. If you decide you want to change something in the video settings later, you'll have to turn off read only, make the changes you want in game, and then go through the whole process of tweaking the text file again. So those are the three, shall we say, mainstream things you can tweak. But there are a few other steps you can take. However, we're going into here be dragons territory here, and I personally don't use any of these tweaks I'm about to mention. First, Auto EXE. Apex Legends runs on the Source engine, so it understands all the Source commands and settings. Whether or not the game actually does anything with it is a different story though. So if you want a bit of an extra boost to your FPS, you can create an Auto EXE file. To do that, you need to open up a new file in your text editor and write the following. Matt underscore diffuse space one. And the other one you want to add is mat underscore post process underscore enable space zero. These affect light diffusion and post processing respectively. Next, save that file in the following folder. Go to your origin games folder. By default, that's C drive, program files, x86, origin games. Next, go to Apex Legends and then CFG. Now, save the file we've just created as auto exec.cfg. After you've saved that, go back to the launch options we tweaked in the beginning and add plus exec space auto exec. Those two changes alone should give you a few more frames and as far as I know, they're stable at the time of making this video. There are a few other things you could have tweaked, but some of those things are known to cause crashes. So that's why I've kept it to those two. If you want to find some more settings you can tweak in this file, I'll leave a link to a Reddit post that is really helpful. As I said though, a lot of these settings are known to cause crashes or just plain don't work. So as I said, here be dragons. So next, custom resolutions. 
The way you do this varies depending on if you have an Nvidia or an AMD card, but you can create custom resolutions to use in Apex Legends. Unfortunately, I don't have an AMD card, so I won't be able to show you the AMD way of doing this. But for Nvidia users, what you wanna do is go to Nvidia Control Panel, go to Change Resolution, and then click Customize. Click Create Custom Resolution, and now you can create your custom resolution. Make sure the aspect ratio fits your monitor or it won't work. For example, on an HD 16x9 monitor, you could set it to 640 by 360. That's 360p in case you're wondering. Create that resolution, then go back to the video config file we edited before and manually change the resolution to 640 by 360. And don't forget to set it to read only afterwards as well. You can actually create pretty much any custom resolution you like as long as it fits the aspect ratio like I said. Try to find a balance between playability and performance. The lower the resolution, the harder it will be to play, but it will perform better. Bear in mind, this tweak is only for if you're running on an absolute potato. For most PCs, 720p should be low enough to get the game into a playable state, and you don't need custom resolutions for that. But if you really want to get the game running on a potato, this could be the way to go. And finally, let's take a look at the kind of sketchy one. This one, I'm afraid, is only for NVIDIA users. NVIDIA Inspector. Quick disclaimer, I personally don't use this. I don't think you'd actually get banned for using it, but it does feel a bit weird. It's probably fine, but proceed at your own risk. So disclaimer out of the way, if you want your game to look like this, all you have to do is download Nvidia Inspector, links in the description, extract the files and open it. Click the settings button next to the driver version and you'll get this window. Type in Apex Legends and see if the game comes up, it probably won't. If it doesn't, click on one of the options that does come up and then click the add application button. Now navigate to Origin Games that we went to before, go to Apex Legends and then double click on r5apex.exe. Once you've added that, scroll down to anti-aliasing transparency super sampling and change it to AA mode, replay mode all. Next, go a little further down to LOD bias DX and manually set that to plus 200. Click apply changes and you're done. It does give you an FPS boost and it does actually look kind of cool, but it feels kind of, mm, I'm not sure this is something you should really be doing. But in the interest of giving you all the options, there it is. I won't be using this personally, but if this does get the game playable for you, then I suppose go ahead. So there you have it guys, the comprehensive guide to either getting your decent but dated computer up to more respectable frame rates or to get your complete potato to even run the game. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did then please feel free to subscribe for more gaming guides, news and discussion. And don't forget to check out the links below to Patreon, Discord and Twitch. Until next time, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.